All right, good afternoon. Hey, uh, Chris Neff here. Um, we're uh, starting something brand new today at Ridgepoint Church. Uh, we're something we're calling The Mix. And basically, the reason we're calling it The Mix is it's kind of a little, little bit of review or recap of what we talked about uh, this past Sunday, but then also just kind of leading up to what we're going to be talking about in the weeks to come and just some of the events going on. I've got JJ uh, here, our lead pastor. Uh, he's going to share a little bit in just a minute. We've also got um, Josh Willis, our uh, executive producer. We gave him a little bit of promotion for these 15 minutes this day. He's back so, behind the camera back there, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> but you'll hear his laughter from time to time. All right. So, uh, tell us. Uh, we obviously we're coming off a really big weekend, JJ. Tell us a little bit about. Why it was such a big weekend? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that maybe you miss out not being a part of Mondays at Ridge Point is that uh, we had a chance to hang out as a staff, have staff meeting, kind of get caught up. Uh, today, Chris, after staff meeting, we actually had a chance to go out to Chipotle and try out the new queso at Chipotle. This is true. This uh, is true. What, what were your thoughts? Um, texture, I, I wasn't a real big fan, you know, and, and I thought I could use a little more flavor to it, but, you know. Yeah, I said all you got to do is melt cheese and it's going to be good. But, yeah, that, but, mm. yeah it, was, it was okay. Yeah, it tasted like you tried to make healthy queso, which is not really possible. So. Yeah, it's not good. So <laughs> stick to most queso is our opinion on that. But, yeah, Chris, this, this past weekend was a really big weekend. We had a couple of things launching. Uh, obviously, we kicked off a brand new series called Finding Your Way Back to God. And uh, along with that series we're launching uh, yesterday and today began the process of launching groups. Uh, we have more groups ob obviously launching throughout the week. Uh, so it's a chance to launch the new series, launch our new groups. Uh, last night our youth group kicked off their whole new Sunday night experience and, and Josh said they had a, just a great response there. So it's been a, a really cool week. There was a lot that was going on. But speaking of a lot going on, yesterday, Chris, you hosted and shared a special giveaway happening right now. It's right. part of our first ever live exactly. video TV show, whatever this is. Exactly. So uh, we got some, um, you know, we, we've been uh, talking about the participant's guide for finding your way back to God. But we actually managed to get our hands on some of the actual books. And uh, we got a really good price on them. And so we wanted to give a few away. And... Uh, it's funny, normally uh, we get about this many connection cards um, turned in, but yesterday, for some reason, when we said that we were going to give books away, we got this many turned in. So right now, we're going to give away 10 of these books real quick. So I'm going to let JJ, I mix these up. JJ's just going to pull. I'm pulling 10 of these. 10. We're pu picking 10 books right, out 10 books. right now live. One, two, three. I'm gonna grab two on this one. All Maybe right. it's it might be husband and wife. They might get two together. What does that count? <laughs> I'm trying to do this quick, and I'm gonna do something that that's nine right there. And for the tenth one, the first person to share this video, Chris, I want to give them a free oh, okay. book as well. Right. So uh, the nine cards: number one, Jim Steenrod, congratulations. Uh, AJ Will's apple juice, number two. <laughs> Uh, number three, Johnny and Brenda Cave, you got it, number three. Number four, Stephanie Albert, number five, Jimmy and Vanessa Bunn. Uh, number six, Jamie Patterson. Number seven, Danielle Brown. Number eight, Bill John. And number nine, it's a whole family, but they only get one book, the PSAC family. Oh, awesome. So those right. nine people, make sure you get with Chris this weekend. Uh, we'll make sure that if, if, if you don't watch the video, we'll make sure that you get those. Chris, hold on to those. those Josh, has anybody shared that, this thing yet? Not yet that and, I can uh, Not yet. You because we're thinking it up so bad. So. <laughs> this is rough. This is our yeah, rough right. cut. Yeah. Uh, but, but Chris, um, real quick uh, about yesterday, we shared some information about some things that were coming. But one thing we didn't get a chance to share because we're only finalizing it, we've been talking for weeks about Blunt Hell Barbecue. The hurricane kind of interrupted our initial plans, right. but now we have an official makeup date. We do. It's going to be on October 20th, um, so that's Friday, October 20th, uh, is when we're going to do the Bloodhound Barbecue. Um, so I know a lot of you already signed up. We'll be in touch with you um, to let you know if, if, make sure with you that that date still works. But maybe now, because it's on the 20th, uh, you uh, now have the opportunity to attend and you want to help out. Um, the way that you can do that, we didn't really talk about this, but we were emailing you, right? Right, absolutely. Okay. Email so me. you can email jj at ridgepointchurch.org. 
Let them know that you want to be involved in the Bloodhound Barbecue. We usually do a couple of shifts. We're going to be serving food from uh, 5, 5.30 to 7. That's correct. And uh, we do normally do a couple of shifts. We do an early shift to help set up and uh, you know begin serving and then a shift that finishes out the serving and then also helps clean up. So um, when you email them, let us, let us know which one you'd prefer. Or maybe you want to work both shifts. Uh, but it's just going to be a great opportunity to love on uh, the Auburndale High School community, to, to serve their teachers and faculty and staff a, a great meal and their families as well before this uh, home football game. So uh, we're really looking forward to it. And by the way, this is the 10th annual one. So it's a big um, deal. It is a big deal. So by the way, Chris, our producer speaking in my ear, we got a winner of that 10th book. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, but my buddy, Denny Rodriguez, you won the 10th book. So congratulations, Denny. Thanks for sharing the video. All right, so um, we just talking about you know the volunteer, and we talked about how you can volunteer for the Bloodhound Barbecue. Yesterday, you mentioned that we're, there's going to be some opportunities to kind of help out with um, kind of the cleanup in Puerto Rico uh, with Hurricane Maria. Tell me a little bit more about that because we've got some details now, right? Yeah, we we shared that yesterday. We had actually had a chance to pray. There's been a lot of devastation in our kind of part of the world the last month, and. And, and obviously there are a lot of people in our community that have close ties to Puerto Rico who were, uh, who are deeply affected, some still trying to contact relatives that are there they haven't heard from. And there are a couple of ladies in our church that really kind of took the lead on that. I want to I thank them personally, Glenda and Ileana, you guys have done a great job in kind of taking the lead on this. And, and they came and said there's a couple of ways we can help out. Uh, obviously one is going to be monetary need for people that are there. We'll, we'll get details more on that. Uh, but the second way is we're going to start to use the church as a collection place for people who want to donate items towards the cause. Uh, the people who are involved who are kind of taking the lead on this are going to take those supplies to Tampa. And from Tampa, the National Guard is actually taking these supplies to Puerto Rico. Uh, they actually gave me a list of items that people can bring. And so if you want to bring any of these items to the church, we'll make sure they get to the right place. But things like toiletries and toilet paper and wipes and hand sanitizer sleeping bags, feminine products, cleaning supplies, bottled water, batteries, baby formula, trash bags, diapers, towels, flashlights, and non-perishable canned goods. We need just a bunch of different uh, items for people who are desperately in need who are going to be without power for months. By the way, we can make that list available um, in some other ways as well so that you guys don't have to come back to this video all the time and and check that out. So we'll, we'll make that available either in the comments or we'll post make another post uh, on our Facebook page and, and let you know what those things are. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, there's a lot of need that's out there. We're going to begin taking some this week, but if you want to wait till Sunday, bring them in this weekend, we can do that as well. But if you have supplies you want to drop off right now, we will start collecting them during the weekday. Uh, let us know throughout this week. Okay. So let, let's get into yesterday, like yeah. just the specifics. Um, if, if you were to kind of just give me a quick synopsis of what you talked about yesterday, just tell me what, what was kind of the key point of everything. That, that's a rough talk to go from 40 <laughs> minutes into one, one couple of sentences. Well, so. that's why you're the pastor. That's right. So. Now, basically, this idea of finding a way back to God is that for any one of us, whether we've sat in church our whole lives out of routine uh, or whether we've never been to church at all, that there's this deep eternal longing. And we talked about this idea that you can't fulfill those eternal longings with temporary fixes. We dealt with that for a long time yesterday. Uh, but, but that ultimately, wherever we're at in our journey, whether we've never found our way back to God initially, or whether we're finding our way back to God again, that for every one of us, that deep longing is only found by going deeper in that relationship, by, by praying the prayer that we mentioned yesterday on a consistent basis in our lives. Okay, well, tell, tell us a little bit about what that prayer is. Yeah, the, the prayer was, was it, it begins with kind of a, a simple statement. Uh, God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. And we pray that every day throughout this 30-day journey together. Uh, but then yesterday, because we talked about this longing inside of us, the second part of the prayer this time was awaken in me the ability to see that you are what's missing in my life. And, and so it, it, it isn't this question of God, is you real? Though people struggle with that. It's saying, God, I assume you're real. And if you're real, make yourself real to me and awaken in me the ability to see, God, that you are, no matter if this is the first time I've experienced God or, or this is me kind of rekindling this journey, that, God, you are the very thing missing in my life. Okay. 
And, and that's a, an important awareness to have. I mean, you know, that uh, this awareness that, that God is doing things around us all the time. And sometimes we're so busy we miss them. But Absolutely. I know you shared a story yesterday of, of, of some kind of an awareness. Can, can you think of another example offhand that's... Uh... <laughs> it's, it's easy to me to, to relate, especially as a, as a youth pastor for a long time. And, and I think that as much as we can kind of poke fun at younger generation... Uh, or, or kind of belittle their faith journey sometimes. There's so many times I've seen young people the ability to to relate on, on a deeper level that we as adults, we get very busy. Right. And, and I think that sometimes when, when Jesus talks about having a faith as, as a child, we complicate things. And, and so for me, I always go back to the journey in youth ministry and, and to see those students have this period of, of discovery uh, that, that is deep and it's real. And, right. and my longings for every one of us, wherever we're at, literally to get away from the complications of life and have the faith of a child. Okay. So th that's a little bit about yesterday. What what can we expect coming up to this next week? Okay, two things I want to share. Number one, both I'm really excited about. One I'm really, really excited about. But this this whole series, Finding Your Way Back to God, is all predicated upon the story of the prodigal son. Uh, and, and so because of that, we're going to have another kind of creative way to retell. Becca shared the story uh, yesterday, did a great job in reading that. We're going to have some different creative things we're going to bring into it. So we'll share the prodigal sto son story again. But the second thing, we haven't announced this yet, but coming up here next Sunday, especially for people who have been around Ridgepoint, uh, for a couple of years, you'll know the names Luke and Tracy Hammer. Luke and Tracy Hammer are sitting right where you're sitting. Uh, they're aviation pilots, and, and they're actually going to aviation mi missionary work. Uh, they're getting ready to launch out to go to Papua New Guinea as, as permanent missionaries. And so they've been in Alaska for a little bit, so you haven't seen them for a while. They're going to be back in town this coming Sunday. So we've asked them to come and share a little bit about what they're getting ready to do. Uh, so we're excited to share the stage this coming Sunday morning. We'll still be doing Finding Your Way Back to God, but a short part of, of, of our service will be dedicated towards Luke and Tracy and them sharing where they're at in their journey. So super stoked about that, Chris. All right. So anything else, anything that we need to share on the mix? <laughs> I, right now, that's it. I want to thank you for taking time to watch the video. Uh, again, we're going to do this weekly. Now, one of the things, we're going to create some questions based upon the sermon this past Sunday, but also because we have a hot uh, on-the-spot executive producer kind of taking <laughs> care of things behind the camera. If you have questions you want to ask live on uh, during uh, the mix, uh, feel free from now on to message those questions or, or make, put those in the comment section. And Josh will actually be bringing those questions to us and sharing them with us. So a great way to interact yeah. with us, Chris. Because well, and I would much would rather answer their questions than the, the questions Josh makes up. So, <laughs> That's <yeah>. true. <laughs> so, hey, again, thanks for checking us out. We deeply appreciate it. Thanks for being part of a community that cares. We'll see you this coming Sunday, 9 and 1045.